we shall commence this module by discussing the stochastic growth model. The stochastic growth models are typically termed as stochastic versions of neoclassical growth model with micro foundations. It also provides a further insight into the modern macroeconomic models. While the deterministic models assume that the outcomes are more certain if the inputs to the model are fixed, the stochastic models takes into account of the varying behavior characteristics due to uncertainty. A stochastic model has one or more stochastic element. The system having stochastic element is generally not solved analytically. But any realistic application in macroeconomics requires models to be stochastic. This is particularly true if we have a long-term ambition to bring macroeconomic models to the data. The concepts and techniques involved in handling stochastic models are no more complex than the deterministic case. Campbell in 1994 has suggested to linearize the model around the steady state to solve the stochastic models and then solve the linearized models with the method of undetermined coefficients. Hence, in this module, first we will discuss the baseline neoclassical growth model with complete markets, augmented with stochastic productivity shocks, first studied by Brock and Meerman in 1972. Then we will discuss how stochastic growth models can be useful in understanding the process of takeoff from low growth to sustained growth. After studying this module, you shall be able to have an insight into new macroeconomic growth models, understand the linearized growth models with stochastic variables, Understand Brock and Meeman model with a focus on the optimal growth problem. Understand the balanced growth path of an economy. Examine the impact of shocks of technology as well as government expenditure on steady state values in the economy. Let us now move on to discuss the model. Brock and Meeman provide the first optimizing growth model with unpredictable, that is, stochastic shocks. Brock and Meerman focused on the optimal growth problem and solved for the social planners maximization problem in a dynamic neoclassical environment with uncertainty. With competitive and complete markets, the equilibrium growth path is identical to the optimal growth path. To start with, we can introduce the stochastic aggregate productivity term in the neoclassical production function. That is, yt is function of kt, lt, and zt, where zt denotes a stochastic aggregate productivity term showing how productive a given combination of capital and labor will be in producing a final good of the economy. In most of the neoclassical growth models under uncertainty, it is assumed that the stochastic shock is a labor augmenting productivity term. So the term aggregate production function becomes yt as a function of kt, zt and lt. Per capita output is defined as small yt which is equal to capital yt upon lt. And per capita production function yt is a function of per capita capital stock kt and zt where per capita capital stock kt is equal to capital kt upon lt corresponding to the capital labor ratio. The capital stock depreciates at a constant rate delta. It is further assumed that the higher values of stochastic shock that is z correspond to greater productivity at all capital labor ratios that is j is greater than j dash. Then 
एफ के जेड जे इज ग्रेटर दैन एफ के जेड जे डैश नाउ टेकिंग ए रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हाउस होल्ड दैट ट्राइज टू मैक्सिमाइज इट्स यूटिलिटी फंक्शन यू सी नाउ वी शेल मूव ऑन टू डिस्कस द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हाउस होल्ड द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हाउस होल्ड सप्लाईज वन यूनिट ऑफ लेबर इन इलास्टिकली सो दैट के टी एंड स्मॉल के टी कैन बी यूज इंटरचेंजेबली द कंजम्पन एंड सेविंग डिसीजन एट टाइम टी आर मेड आफ्टर रियलाइजिंग द स्टॉकस्टिक शॉक फॉर द सेम टाइम विद द कंजम्पन सी टी हैंस द ऑब्जेक्टिव फंक्शन इज टू मैक्सीमाइज द एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ बीटा टी म्यू सी टी एंड टी वेरीज फ्रॉम जीरो टू इन्फिनिटी the utility function from current and future consumption of the representative household is defined as ut is equal to et summation 1 upon 1 plus rho raised to power s minus t where s varies from t to infinity multiplied by log of cs with rho is greater than 0 which denotes the subjective discount rate every household has xs assets upon which it receives interest payments equivalent to xs into rs and receives labor income at given wage rate equal to ws into l for labor services l including tax payments as a lump sum amount ts the budget constraint of the household can be written as xs plus 1 equal to xs into 1 plus rs plus ws into l minus ts minus cs assuming that the households do not incur ever increasing debts therefore over the infinitely long horizon the present discounted value of the households assets must be zero termed as the transversality condition which is limit et the product of 1 upon 1 plus rs dash where s dash varies from t to s to be multiplied with x s plus 1 must be equal to 0 thus the maximization problem of the household can be written as ut xt is equal to maximum ct which is function of log ct plus 1 upon 1 plus rho et multiplied with ut plus 1 and xt plus 1 subject to the constraint xt plus 1 is equal to xt 1 plus rt plus wt into l minus tt minus ct the first order condition for ct is 1 upon ct minus 1 upon 1 plus rho into et the derivative of ut plus 1 multiplied by xt plus 1 to be divided with the derivative of xt plus 1 which must be equal to 0 besides the envelope theorem implies that the derivative of ut xt with respect to xt must be equal to 1 upon 1 plus rho into et into dut plus 1 into xt plus 1 divided by dxt plus 1 to be multiplied with 1 plus rt substituting equation 2 in equation 3 we get the derivative of ut xt with respect to xt equal to 1 plus rt into 1 upon ct and the derivative of ut plus 1 xt plus 1 with respect to xt plus 1 is equal to 1 plus rt plus 1 into 1 upon ct plus 1 hence the equation 2 becomes 1 upon ct minus ct 1 plus rt plus 1 divided by 1 plus rho into 1 upon ct plus 1 is equal to 0 in a three sector economy the equilibrium in the goods market requires that yt is equal to ct plus it plus gt therefore we can construct a function for representative firm as well as the government sector on the production side let us take a representative firm the representative firm has a production function 
of Cobb Douglas type and assuming that the aggregate productivity term is labor augmenting, the aggregate production function becomes yt is equal to kt raised to power alpha multiplied with at and lt the whole raised to power 1 minus alpha with 0 is less than alpha and less than 0. y is aggregate output, a is the aggregate capital stock, l is the aggregate labor supply and a is a technology parameter. The subscript T denotes the time period. The aggregate capital stock depends on aggregate investment I and the depreciation rate delta. AT plus 1 is equal to 1 minus delta into KT plus IT with 0 less than equal to delta which is again less than equal to 1. As discussed before, here the productivity parameter A follows a stochastic path with trend growth G. Log AT is equal to log AT star plus AT hat. AT hat is equal to phi A AT minus 1 hat plus the error term E AT with phi A less than 1. AT star is equal to AT minus 1 star to be multiplied with 1 plus G. Here the stochastic shock EAT is independent and identically distributed that is IID with mean 0. The variables evaluated on balanced growth path are donated by a star and the log linear deviations from the balanced growth path are donated by a hat so that a hat is equal to log a minus log a star. With equilibrium in goods and factor market, taking the current and future prices as given, the firm hires labor and capital to maximize its current value. For this purpose, the firm hires labor until the marginal product of labor is equal to the wages. That is 1 minus alpha multiplied by yt upon lt is equal to wt. And it hires the capital stock until the marginal cost of investment which is assumed to be 1 here is equal to the sum of expected discounted marginal product of capital at time t plus 1. And the discounted value of the extra capital stock which is left after depreciation at time t plus 1. This is represented by this equation. 1 is equal to ET into 1 upon 1 plus RT plus 1 into alpha YT plus 1 divided by KT plus 1 plus ET 1 minus delta divided by 1 plus RT plus 1. Moving on to discuss the government in stochastic model. The government expenditure also follows a stochastic path and is expressed in the similar way as in case of productivity in representative form. That is log gt is equal to log gt star plus gt hat. That is gt hat is equal to phi g gt minus 1 star plus e gt where the modulus of phi g is less than 1 or gt star is equal to gt minus 1 star multiplied by 1 plus g. Here the stochastic shock egt is independent and identically distributed with mean 0. ea and eg are exogenous factors which represent the respective shocks in technology and government expenditure. Both ea and eg are uncorrelated at all leads and lags. Now we shall understand the balanced growth path. On the balanced growth path, all the shocks and the deviations have zero value. That is EAT is equal to AT hat is equal to EGT is equal to GT hat is equal to zero. 
With this assumption, the model assumes the form of neoclassical growth model, for which the solution is given in the following manner. If consumption C grows at rate G, then the consumption level at the balanced growth path can be derived from equation 5, that is C as star to be multiplied with 1 plus G is equal to 1 plus R star divided by 1 plus rho into C S star. Here, 1 plus R star indicates the gross real rate of return. The level of investment in the balanced growth path can be expressed as I T star is equal to G plus delta to be multiplied with alpha R star plus delta to the power 1 upon 1 minus alpha multiplied with A T L. For getting the value of consumption on balanced growth path, we can put the value of yt star, it star and gt star in equilibrium equation, yt is equal to ct plus it plus gt in such a way that ct star is equal to yt star minus it star minus gt star which will be equal to alpha divided by r star plus delta raised to the power alpha divided by 1 minus alpha and this is to be multiplied with a t into l minus g plus delta multiplied by alpha divided by r star plus delta raised to the power 1 upon 1 minus alpha into a t into l minus g t star. c t star is equal to 1 minus alpha multiplied with the ratio of g plus delta and r star plus delta. This component is to be multiplied with alpha divided by r star plus delta raised to power alpha divided by 1 minus alpha and a t into l minus g t star. Let us now understand the linearizing around the balanced growth path. As already discussed, the deviations from the balanced growth path are denoted by a hat which show the estimated values. Hence, all the variables determining the equilibrium in the economy are expressed here in terms of their estimated values. Starting from production function given in equation 6, log yt is equal to alpha into log kt plus 1 minus alpha into log a t plus 1 minus alpha into log l t. Deviations from the balanced growth path can be expressed as log y t minus log y t star is equal to y t hat which is equal to alpha log a t minus log a t star plus 1 minus alpha log a t minus log a t star plus 1 minus alpha log lt minus log lt star. Taking phi 1 is equal to r star plus delta divided by 1 plus r star, phi 2 minus r star plus delta divided by 1 plus r star and phi 3 is equal to minus 1 upon 1 plus r star. As we know that log yt minus log yt star is equal to yt hat. Log ct minus log ct star is equal to ct hat. Log it minus log it star is equal to it hat. And log gt minus log gt star is equal to gt hat. yt hat which is equal to phi 1 into ct hat plus phi 2 into it hat plus phi 3 into gt hat and phi 3 is equal to gt star divided by yt star. yt hat becomes yt hat is equal to ct star upon yt minus 1 into ct hat plus it star upon yt star into it hat plus gt star upon yt star into gt hat. All the values of income, consumption, investment and government expenditure on balanced growth path can be easily calculated 
through investment and consumption function of representative firm and the representative household. Assuming that the wages and the rate of interest are market clearing. All the variables are endogeneously determined. The solution can also be found if there is some technology shock in the economy, which further enables us to trace out the effects of technology shock into the infinite future. Same is true for shocks in government expenditure. But once the economy has passed through these shocks, all the state variables eventually converge back to their steady state values. We can see this diagrammatically in figures. We can see that in figure, the technology jumps in quarter one, resulting into increase in investment, capital stock, income, as well as consumption by the representative firm and the household. In case of households, C increases less than Y, and in case of firms, I increases more than Y, leading to an increase in capital stock K. The real wages W follow the time path of the income Y, while the expected rate of return is high as the economy experiences the technology shock. But as its effects fade out, the expected rate of interest falls and becomes negative after a few quarters. Eventually, all variables converge back to their steady state values. Similarly, we can also see the effect of shock in government expenditure in figure. In this figure, we can see that after moving on the balanced growth path, the economy experiences a shock in government expenditure in quarter one. This leads to an increase in expected returns that is ER. But as the shock in government expenditure fades away, the ER declines. This has also led to an increase in investment. But in order to keep Y equal to C plus I plus G, the C remains at low level initially. As usual, the real wages follow the same pattern as experienced in case of Y. And ultimately, every variable of the economy resumes the steady state growth path. Let us now summarize what we have discussed in this module. To sum up, we can say that the stochastic models take into account of the varying behavior characteristics due to uncertainty. A stochastic model has one or more stochastic elements. In theory, most of the growth models are deterministic in nature. But any realistic application in macroeconomics require models to be stochastic. These models have many macroeconomic implications and play a wider role in policymaking. We have also observed how stochastic models can significantly enrich the analysis of economic growth and economic development. In particular, this model showed how a simple extension of our standard models can generate an equilibrium path even though the shocks are introduced into the model.